Arcam, a name we all know and a brand associated with high quality home audio electronics. The company was formed in 1976, but it wasn't until 2001 that they entered the AV receiver market with the AVR100. The company has released a lot of AVR products since then, and as we look through the photos, we can clearly see the evolution of the design in terms of visuals. And it's really interested in the modern market with the way things are, Arkham is still able to produce premium products and compete with the bigger Japanese and other name brands. Hello and welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. In for review, we have had the Arcan AVR850 AV receiver, and it's been quite some time since I've had an AV receiver in my system. I went over to a pre and power setup some years ago, and there were some quite clear and obvious reasons why I did that. Now, the, the AVR850, in my mind, is a very special product and an important product within the current AV marketplace now for me AV receivers and other other products within AV are often or always really you know they're in a race aren't they the race to the top but they're also in a race to the bottom and I think they're in a race to the top and bottom simultaneously i.e how many how much technology can we squeeze into a single box how many amplifier channels can we squeeze into a single box how many sales features and how many sales terms and you know and, and buzzwords can we squeeze into a single box and yet you know, how cheap can we obviously sell it for? How much volume can we sell? And even if, you know, products from the, you know, from the major big companies that we all know, uh, they'll bring a product out, won't they? You know, a flagship product, product, it starts at one price and yet within a couple of months, you know, the price is dropping and dropping and, you know, normally a third slashed off within a few months. So, you know, they come in high with all the features and stuff, but really then it's then a race to the bottom to try and sell as many as they can. Now, that's never really been the case with Arcam. Uh, AV receivers and it's certainly not the case with the AVR850 you know it's not overloaded with technology and amplifier channels in order to sell it and it's not changed price it's been the same RRP since the day it was released now one of the big features for this Arcam or the whole Arcam AV receiver range is direct live now that is a major feature but that to me is not one of the uh kind of buzzword features they're putting in there for you know to purely to sell it that is in there for proper sound quality benefit and technical reasons but we'll cover more of that in a minute so our camera AV receivers are also the go-to products if you want an AV receiver for movies and music so is the AVR850 the go-to product for that as well Okay, let's look at the design of the Arkham AVR850 and really it is completely in keeping with the whole Arkham FMJ range. They're all, you know, similar looking chassis, similar similar all the similar color, similar front, you know, kind of sculpted curved front and you know, everything's very similar with our kind of grill here. So, to me that's absolutely fine. It, it gives the, the whole range identity within the market. I think there's a big difference in terms of design within the hi-fi market and the AV market, purely because in the hi-fi market, the Arcam products are you know, kind of middle to lower end in terms of the whole market, whereas really this AVR receiver is, is actually at the highest price point, the higher price point. So technically you could expect more from it because of that, but I think Arcam just about gets away with in terms of kind of design and in terms of build quality so you know i actually think this is a really nice product to look at i find the color you know very easy on the eyes it's kind of it disappears within your room it, obviously our room is pitch black isn't it but i think in most rooms it's going to disappear and you know it's kind of nice enough to look at the build quality is is again kind of i suppose i would say reasonable kind of just about good enough and um, for me, I actually prefer the look of this. It's quite industrious, isn't it? You know, it's in, and in quite simplistic. But I do prefer the look of this to some of the Japanese very bright or glossy kind of finished products. So you know, visually for me, this this is good enough from a from an AV uh, receiver point of view. I mean, a, a display on the front, which is a little bit old school and green, which is really kind of just again in keeping with Arkham and 
kind of, I think like a British AVR, you know, or AV products, green. I'm actually used to that from other products. It, you know, it means okay, it's nothing lavish. I think, uh, you know, products now are moving into having like really nice OLED screens and stuff like that. This is far, obviously, from that level of quality, but it's good enough, you know, it's nice enough. It's functional in, in terms of, I think, how it looks and really where things are laid out. But let's move on to the rear. Okay, so looking at the rear, of the amplifier, you know, it's typical of Avery receiver. We're trying to cram in 4,000 connections in there, which to be fair, most of them, you know, you're never gonna use. But I like the fact it's actually quite sensibly laid out in a sense we've got our, you know, our power uh, input is, is away from a lot of our connections. Obviously HDMI uh, inputs being at the top. Um, net network kind of in the middle, speaker binding post kind of at the bottom. It, 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 is, it is well laid out and it does make sense when you're wiring this up and you're wiring in your subwoofers, even though they're kind of spaced out over here. Once, once you've actually wired it all up, it kind of feels neat. It, it, it's impossible to keep AV products neat. There's so many connections and wires and stuff. And that's, that's inevitable. There's not really a lot we can do about that. But once you've wired your whole system up, you do feel... Like it makes sense. Now, I've got one massive gripe with this AV receiver, and that is these binding posts. Now, these are better quality than the, the cheapy plastic ones that, you know, the ones you see on a lot of AV type products, the real cheap plastic ones. These are a better quality than them. I don't actually find these that high quality, but that's not really the problem. The problem is they're so close together is that if you're going to try and use this AV receiver with speaker cables that are quite big and chunky you know some of your typical audiophile type speaker cables then if they've got spade connectors you may have a problem when i was trying to wire this up with my usual speaker cable um which is xlo speaker cable from from quite a few years ago using american style uh, american sized spade connectors now i was having real problems trying to wire you know the center the left and the right speakers up and in the end, I actually gave up because I didn't feel safe. I didn't feel like I could use those speaker cables safely because I just couldn't get them to fit nicely. And they was all so close together that there was a chance of a, of a, of a short, you know, I, you know, one touching the other. So for the purpose of this review, I had to borrow some speaker cables. I actually was using some Audio Quest for the left and right channels. I actually using some Telerium Q Black for the center speaker channel. Now that was out of necessity because those cables came with banana plugs. So if you're gonna use banana plugs, then they're gonna fit absolutely fine. But if you've got speaker cable with spades, then you might have a problem and you might need to change those. Another thing that I noticed is that quite often when you first input a banana plug into a binding post, it's quite a tight fit on a lot of products. It feels quite stiff putting them in. As I was putting them into this, I actually felt like the back plate was flexing a little bit as I was putting them in. Now, feeling it now, it actually feels really solid and strong, but you know, when you're putting pressure in to try and get a banana plug in and you can feel the whole back plate flex a little bit, look, just a touch disappointing, you know, just a touch disappointing. So, not perfect, Arkham, to me, this is not perfect in, in, at all in terms of quality and not perfect at all in terms of kind of function of things and the spacings and stuff. So, to me, there's room for improvement there. And, you know, I appreciate there's a lot of connections on the back of an AV receiver. Um, but, you know, I always feel like less is more in, in that regard. So what can we get what can we get rid of? What do we desperately need? And let's make space for more important things and let's put better quality binding posts and better quality parts, you know, where 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 they are important. Now speaking of quality, I've got one other niggle with this product. Okay, this is my other niggle. Now it's the remote control. Now obviously it illuminates, it glows up and the buttons feel okay, and to use it, it's okay. But that is it, it's okay. Now, for this price and quality of AV product, I think we should get a much higher quality of remote control. Now, for example, at what I class as a high quality remote control, look at the Oppo 203, for example. The remote control for that is absolutely fantastic. Not just the fact that it lights up, when you pick it up and it movement, that, that is brilliant. That's to be honest, one of the best things I've ever seen on a remote control. It's just the quality and the responsiveness of that remote control is fantastic. This remote control just feels old school. It just feels old fashioned. It's got that kind of sluggish responsiveness when you use it. And again, you know, it's, it's not a 
nothing wrong with it really with it and it's not it's certainly not enough to put me off this product it's just like come on you we expect at this level expect a bit more and i'm sure this is the same remote control used throughout the whole range and you know and i understand that business big business works now they save money and now they can probably pack more into here because of some savings here but at this price point this needs to be better in my opinion so really from a visual point of view just to sum up i, I actually think it's nice to look at and a nice piece of home cinema equipment but it's not lavish and because we are at the top price point for home cinema receivers yeah, I suppose we could expect a bit more luxury in terms of the product. Okay then, let's, the specification for the AVR850. Now I could read off a whole big list of the full specifications. I don't really feel the need to do that. I don't really think there's any benefit of that. So what I'm just going to do is highlight some of the main features that's in this product and some of the main features that are missing from this product. And, and it kind of is going to be a theme obviously through this review which come to the conclusion will make a bit more sense. So. Class G amplification in this product, that's a huge tick. Class G amplification is fantastic. It sounds fantastic. You know, my experience with this and another Arcan power amplifier, it's fantastic technology, it works great. Three major cinema features within this. Obviously we've got Dolby Atmos processing. Obviously we've not got the amplification channels within this, but we've got Dolby Atmos processing and Dirac Live room correction, two major ones, and now with newer firmware's Dirac Live for all channels, including the hype channels. So they, they are major features. Then we've got DTS-X as well, which has been brought out with a more recent firmware, and the, just the very latest firmware uh, at the time of making this review, Dolby Vision has been added to the spec list, or the feature list, or the supported list for this product, which is really fantastic. I'm really impressed with Arcan for releasing that, obviously for their existing range and not saving that for a, for a future range. So kudos to Arcan, Arcan, kudos to Arcan for doing that. There's one major um, feature that's missing for me and that is Oro 3D. Now, Oro 3D, from all the immersive format experience that I've had, Oro 3D has actually been some of the best. So it's a shame that's not included within this product, but we obviously we are ultra limited with content for that. But you know, again, at the price point, it would be nice to have that in it. Now, from a music point of view, we have no MQA at the time of this review, no DSD at the time of this review. So, you know, they might not be for everybody, but it's a shame. You know, there are two quite big features that are actually not in this, and, I, and that could be to do with the whole thought process of this receiver. Well, I don't know, but that'll be in the conclusion, obviously coming up now. Power-wise, it's got plenty of power, and you'll see the full specification coming up now. Okay, live with ability for the AVR850. Now, I've actually had this product in for review for several weeks, and that's because I know AV receivers are quirky, and sometimes it can take you quite a bit of time to work out the best way to set them up and the best way to squeeze the performance out of them. And not only that, it takes quite a bit of time to get through the content to really assess you know, the product. So I've had this for several weeks. And in terms of operation, in terms of how everything works, I would say it works okay. You know, I've had no major issues, no major problems, but it's nothing's ultra slick, nothing's ultra modern. Our menu system, you know, it's actually very basic. Uh, you know, the options and stuff that we've got are actually very basic. Now, I actually like that. To me, I, I don't need thousands of options and menus that I'm never going to use. Basic is better, but I think that's important when, you know, some companies are giving out flashy graphics and stuff while they're doing things. None of that. It's all just simple, basic, kind of old school menus. I've already mentioned the remote control. That is also quite old school in, its, in, in the way it works and stuff. Again, not terrible, but you know, not ultra modern, ultra slick. I've had a few HDMI handshake issues where instead of a picture coming on, I've just had fuzz on the screen. Now, it's been a case of just quickly turn the product off, turn the product back on again, and that, and that has fixed it. So it's not the end of the world, it just hasn't been completely perfect in operation. I've also had a couple of times where it's taken a few seconds for the HDMI the handshake to sync. Again, not the end of the world, but it's not been that kind of instant, but then again, it's not. You know, these are not major things. I've also had, this has also tripped out the power 
uh, here a few times as well. Now looking into that situation further, by all accounts, some circuit breakers can be a little bit sensitive to the to, to kind of the draw and the current draw from Class G amplification. So that's something that can be looked into. So if you buy this product and you have that issue, it's not a fault or anything. It's just potentially having an electrician come in just to change literally your circuit breaker up from a Type B to a Type C, which is about a five pound per part change. So it's not a huge cost, but you know something I think to to point out to, to potential buyers. That, that, that you know, if that happens, that's what you do to fix it. But there are some very good points uh, in terms of livability for this amplifier. Now that is heat generation. That's probably the biggest one. You know, it generates kind of a medium amount of heat. You'll feel parts of the amplifier be warmer than others. And when it, when that is the case to me, that is a sure sign that the amplifier is not getting that hot. A hot amplifier is generally hot equally all over, but you'll find parts of this which are hotter than others, which means really the heat generation is minimal, especially for a product like this. You know, AV receivers are notorious for getting red hot, aren't they? But this doesn't, this gets kind of, I suppose warm by compare, you know, a little bit warmer than a previous uh, RKM amplifier that I've had, but warm as opposed to hot. So that, that's a huge benefit when you're in a, you know, sealed up room, you know, big projector or big TV pumping out heat, potentially other amplifiers or in other kit or TV or whatever, all pumping out heat. You know, the last thing the last thing we want is heat being generated by our, you know, our amplifiers and stuff. So that is big, you know, a big thumbs up in terms of just living with this amplifier. Another a really cool feature that it has, and I didn't actually know this, I actually discovered this by pure chance because like a typical man, I don't read 40, read manuals, we work it out as we go, don't we? We're men. So I had this on and I was warming it up, funny enough, before a music listening session, and I played an album, disappeared for a while, came back, and I thought it had turned itself off. And only when I went to and I touched the remote uh, volume knob on the front, it came back on. I was like, oh wow, it's obviously gone into a power save mode. So uh, bear that in mind, if you want to warm the amplifier up, make sure there's content running. However, if you leave it with no content, it strips off into a power save mode. So again, fair play, kudos. I've, ne I've never seen that on an AV product before. Obviously I've seen it on televisions and stuff, but never on an AV receiver or AV product. So I mean, to me, that's like another very nice feature to have if you go to bed forget it, it's on, it's gonna shut itself off anyway. So that's a nice feature to have. And another thing in terms of this receiver, once it's set up, and once you're watching a movie or you're listening to music, but more so watching a movie, it never draws attention to itself. You never think about it, it just goes about its business. You're completely oblivious to the fact that it's there. And actually for me, that is the high, about the highest praise that you can give to something in terms of living with it. So it's, you know, once a film's on, once a film has been on, I've never had an issue. Once it's been playing, you know, no issues at all with anything. So to me, that's the highest praise is when you're not conscious of a product, it's just on, it's just doing its thing and you're just able to enjoy the content. So to me, that is a massive tick for live with ability of the AVR850. Okay then, let's talk about the sound quality of the AVR850, the bit you're all waiting for. Now, obviously it's gonna be broken up into two halves. We're gonna do movies and we're gonna do music. Now, I've watched a lot of content with this AVR receiver. I mean a lot of content. Bear me one second and I'll show you how much. I've watched this much movie content with this AVR receiver. And that's not because this is the usual amount of stuff I would put you know, a, you know, a product through for review. It's purely because I've enjoyed the experience so much that it's been dig out another one, dig out another one, dig out another one. And I've actually bought one, two, three, four, five, five UHD movies since having this product in for review. So about 130 pounds-ish worth of films that I've actually bought since I've had this. So it's literally been a case of, wow, really enjoyed that experience, want another one. Wow, really enjoyed that experience, want another one. So that to me is high praise for anything, but very high praise for an AV product. Now I went over to a pre and power combination setup years ago, purely because at the time, and still really to this day, the, the pre and power combination gives you more of everything. 
bigger, more powerful, more dynamic sound, more refinement, which is really important, and control and precision, and a kind of a richer and bolder presentation. All of that I was getting from a pre and power combination by compare to AV receivers that I was hearing at the time. And to be fair, to AV receivers I've heard pretty much since. There's been no product I've heard that's made me think an AV receiver is as good or a better solution until now actually now spending some time with this avr receiver i actually think this is well if i was to describe it it's the sound for movies in a word it would be superb and i actually think it's very close to being superb in general not just superb for AV receivers. For AV receivers, this is absolutely superb. But in general, for general AV products, this is like a gnat's cock away from it, from being superb just in general. Now, why do I say that? Well, the, the big obviously feature, obviously direct live room correction, that is fantastic. And I already, I already thought that before I used this, that actually putting it in, I mean, I've used it in stereo, putting it to work for a multi-channel system has just as much benefit and potentially even more. The way it just knits the whole sound together because it's doing time delay features for all your channels. The way it knits the sound together and the bass quality from it is at nothing short of spectacular. But Direct Live is not a magic wand. It may work its magic on your system and on your system sound, but it's not a magic wand. And to me, to be fair, it wouldn't be enough on its own. The, the the meat and the bones have to be backed up. You know, the meat and the brains have to be backed up with the meat and the bones. And that's exactly what you get from this AV receiver. Now, one big caveat with how the system is set up for our references, we have high crossovers. 120 hertz is where I set the crossover for this receiver. So it's not having to do bass at all for the speakers. Now bear that in mind because the Kef Reference 3 and 2C center speakers at the front, they're demanding speakers. They need big amplification. And I was worried, I was really worried that going over to an AV receiver was gonna be a letdown, was gonna be a disappointment. But I needn't have been, it's not been a disappointment at all. It's actually been really surprising and really impressive. The movie quality and the, just the movie experience with this AV receiver and, and to be fair I, I don't feel like I've lost anything from a pre and power combination I, I don't think I've gained anything either but I don't think I've lost anything and that is a real big one because that means you can use this product instead of several boxes within within its limits within its limitations so that, that's a real big thing and that opens up lots of options for other setups and stuff, which again, will be mentioned a bit in the conclusion, but I'll mention more in the future. Um, speak, speaking specifically about the sound, refinement is the most important thing for me in a movie. For me, a movie, and not only music, but obviously a movie, is supposed to be a pleasure. It's not supposed to be a punishment. So after we've had an ultra loud and pumping several hours of intense sound, how do we feel after it? Do we feel like we straight away want to put another film in and go again? Or are we tired? Have we had enough of that sound? And my experience of AV receivers is normally I've had enough of this. I don't want to go again. But as I say, it's not been the case with this AVR. I've literally bought disc after disc after disc and watched content after content and enjoyed every single second of it. And it's not all been set up perfectly. I've worked out uh, through some advice from AV forums how to get better you know, since the, you know, updating the firmware and how to get better uh, integration, sound integration, most importantly, bass integration with this AVR receiver in terms of, if you go and see the setup guide that I've created, you'll see what I'm, what I'm talking about. So throughout the time I've spent with it, the setup of this has got better and better and better in terms of my understanding of how it works and what to do. But I've enjoyed literally every single second of using this. I've not disliked any of it. I've not felt you know, disappointed with any of it from a movie point of view. And it's actually given me some fantastic, enjoyable movie watching experiences. Now, one of, there's two big ones I'm going to mention. One was Ghost in the Shell. Now, that got slated by a lot of people in terms of reviews and even slated for its visual and its sonic, um, you know, this ultra HD disc quality. Well, I didn't, I didn't experience that at all. It looked gorgeous on the 4K projector and it sounded incredible through this AVR and that wasn't even set up best. And then more recently I bought the two John Wick films in UHD and John Wick 2, the soundtrack through this, mind blowing, 
absolutely mind blowing. And anybody, any AV person with any amount of experience would sit in the system and watch that through this and be impressed and be seriously impressed. And probably if you blind tested them, they wouldn't believe that sound was coming from an AV receiver. They wouldn't believe it because it's got the scale. It's got that bold character that I spoke about from a pre and power. It's got precision and clarity, not quite the level of precision and clarity you get from you know good pre and power, but it's so damn this close. And then the bass, obviously the bass is all the subwoofers, but the control from the bass, Dirac Live, and the good quality DAX in this and power supplies and stuff, the bass quality and fullness and guts in it of the bass, but all that with the control. That, to me, that is that is it. When you get bass like that, which is f massive and powerful, but controlled at the same time, you can't help but be seriously impressed. And I've had all of that with this detail. A really good soundstage. A soundstage where you feel like there's a big space between the front and the back with you sat right in the middle of a, of a sound field. And that is only from 5.2. I should have mentioned that right at the start. Th this review is only with a system in 5.2 at the moment. So three at the front, two at the back, and two subwoofers. That is the setup. So I can't fault this. I can't find any fault at all for the movie experience. Not one single fault. And it's very rare that... Uh, you, you review a product and you can't find a flaw with it. But for, for its m movie performance, there's not one, not a single flaw. So hats off, Arkham. You've really thought about it. You've really put a lot of effort, to me, into the movie side of this product. A ton of effort and a ton of attention to detail. And it sounds glorious. And, and that probably is a really good word to describe it. Glorious is how it sounds for movies. And it doesn't matter what you put on, whether it's something like... Um, you know, something like John Wick, gunshot after gunshot after gunshot with kind of heavy hitting music, or if it's something a bit more light hearted and a, with some more kind of soulful and character type music, something like Man from Uncle, the soundtrack from that, wow, wow, it, it would impress anybody, literally anybody. So, fair play, Arkham, great job, absolutely stunning. But again, you know, people come to Arkham, people pay the premium because they want that movie quality experience, but also want music to deliver as well. So how does it perform for music? And I'm sure there's a lot of people waiting for this part. Now, let me speak about the music side of things. So, Dirac Live for music, I'm already a convert. I already think it's essential, regardless of your speakers, regardless of your acoustic room conditions. To me, it's essential because it just, even if you've got a fantastic room, this will still improve the sound. It's brilliant. So for music, that was already, you know, I'm already a convert and that works fantastically well within this AVR receiver and it does its thing. Now, the positives of the sound for music for me, good sound stage, quite good bass control, you know, quite dynamic sounding, you know, big sounding. They, they were the, the, the positives for me. Now, when I compare the, this for music, recently I've had some seriously good musical hi-fi products in. I've had a great range of Cord Electronics, DAX, PS Audio DAX, and they've all been through, you know, the Musical Fidelity New Vista 800 uh, integrated amplifier. These are killer hi-fi products, kind of the cream, the best. So comparing this Arkham to them is a little bit unfair, but that is the comparison. You know, that is what this is up against, you know. So how does it compare to those? Well, as I say, you know, good soundstage, quite good dynamics, relatively smooth in its delivery, but compared to those products, it sounds like an AV receiver for music. And that was just a slight, that's a slight kind of chink in the armor for me. But that is because my expectations are here, you know, way off the charts, because that is what I've been listening to recently. And unfortunately, when you experience that kind of high level, then that is just your expectation bar. There's no shift in that. Actually for an AV receiver, it gives you, you know, a good, solid musical performance, which is probably going to be good enough for most people. If, if you are an 80% movies and a 20% music man, this is going to blow you away. If you are 50% music and a 50% movies, and, and that music part is really important, 
you need to try this and you need to have a listen because if you're not used to Dirac Live and actually getting that within your system, it could well blow you away that all of a sudden your bass is controlled, all of a sudden your mid-range is controlled. But if you're coming from you know higher quality hi-fi products like your top of the range chord electronics DAX and stuff, that level of precision and clarity that you get from those, you're just not going to get that from, from an AV receiver. But what's really interesting is can we get better sound for music with this? Now, I actually potentially think we can in two ways. We can either feed into this through the direct. It's got a stereo direct function which disables all processing and stuff. So we could feed into this with a much higher quality DAC. So we could feed into it with something like a Chord Hugo 2 through the Class G and preamplifier section of this with the power that it's got and stuff. I actually think that would potentially sound great but then we're going to get no Dirac Live. So that is a major, it's like a you know, big positive for a big negative. So that's one option. Another option would be just to have this for your home cinema front end and then feed an integrated amplifier with a separate DAC that has a home theatre bypass. Now, I think that is what Arcam have intended with this whole lineup of products. They've intended for you to have multiple boxes as opposed to one box to rule them all because one box to rule them all doesn't rule them all. One box is actually normally a massive compromise. Okay, conclusion. There's no getting away from this. Is a you know this is a high priced AV receiver that's not got all the bells and whistles. We've only got seven channels of amplification where other AV receivers give you eleven. We haven't got Oro 3D, which you get in other AV products with no MQA and no DSD. So we've certainly not got all the bells and whistles for a high price tag. From a visual point of view, it's nice, but build quality point of view, not, you know, not luxurious, not glorious, obviously at the higher price point, and the remote control is a bit naff. So there are quite a few kind of negatives, obviously, of this product, but we've got some serious positives, and the positives are so serious that they far outweigh those negatives. Now, for, for starters, you know, having Dirac Live, built into this product, which is something that until recently was exclusive to the ultra high end of the market. So to have that within an AV receiver range in more, more affordable money is, is phenomenal really, and it's not something that can be overlooked. And then we've got you know Class G amplification, which is a you know, great technology and a really great way, a really great amplification technology, it sounds fantastic. We're getting movie performance, which is you know, like a, again, like a whisper away from really high premium pre and power combinations from a single box solution. And a single box solution, which has the processing for a full Atmos system and DTSX, you know, with other power amplifiers and, and other bits within the chain. So while some people will look at that and they'll want an all-in-one solution, you know, one box to do it all, and I totally understand why they would want that, because it's very difficult in a normal living room or normal living conditions for the average Joe Bloggs man like me and a lot of other people to have all these boxes and stuff like that. But really, when you, when you think about it, everyone knows and everyone would have, if they had the option, multiple boxes for everything, because they would know multiple boxing for everything is gonna be the way forward. That is gonna be the way to give you better sound. Now, I think Arkham have embraced several things with this amplifier. First of all, I think they've embraced the fact that this is an AV receiver. It's not a music or hi-fi product. So I actually think for this, they're focused on the movie performance, making that absolutely stellar. You know, let's let's not try and be the, you know something for everyone. Let's try and make this an absolutely stellar movie performer because that's probably what people are going to use it for most of the time. And then let's think about you know ways of expanding the product range. So someone could use this as a you know, as their preamp processor and an amplifier for maybe five of their channels, center, four rear channels, and then we can link out to an in integrated amplifier, something like the A forty nine, which is a great integrated amplifier which someone could use for their front two channels and that's their then their hi-fi system so they've got a dedicated hi-fi system and they've got you know a fantastic AV receiver and then they've got another link to the four our P 429 which is a class G amplifier slimline 
for your four Atmos hype channel. So what's great about that setup is, well, dedication. Dedication for home cinema, dedication for hi-fi. That's gonna give you better sound overall. And then we've got, it's scalable, isn't it? We don't necessarily have to buy all of it at once. We can buy it and build it up in stages. So that is a massive positive as well. And it also means we don't buy stuff we don't need. So if we only want to run a 5.1 or 2 channel system or a 7.1 or, or 2 channel system, it's probably gonna be most of the market. We don't need all that. And you can still get good hi-fi performance from this. I don't want people to think this is a poor performer. It's not. It's just if you're, I don't want to put people in the illusion this is performing at the, the standards of the highest hi-fi because it's not. That's the truth. And I think most people would probably go, okay, I expect that. Where I actually think this, this sits in terms of performance level is somewhere between, a, say, a Cord 2Q DAC and a Cord Hugo. DAC. Not the Hugo 2, probably the Hugo 1, somewhere in there. It doesn't have the resolution and stuff of the chords, but you get a kind of bigger sort of presentation from than you do with the 2Q. So that should give you some idea roughly of where this is performing from a musical po point of view. That's pretty good. You know, for most people, that's very good. And in general, that is pretty good. So let's just sort of, you know, put that in there in terms of perspective of where we are with this. But for movies and the movie experience, this is up there. This is really and genuinely up there and that is the biggest surprise to me because I was expecting it to be good, don't get me wrong, but I was also not expecting it to be as good as it was. And because it's so good for movies, it gets the treatment. It gets these because it actually, it deserves it. It absolutely deserves it. I've watched some serious movie content with this and it's been stonk, stonking, fantastic. Brilliant, gripping, fun, enjoyable, dynamic. You know, uh, you know, and, and it's not. You know, I I am the most biggest critic in the world, and it's not it's not disappointed me in any facet of its performance, ever. Not once have I felt disappointed with anything from this. In fact, I've just sat there and watched stuff and really enjoyed it. I've watched really movies that are not brilliant, but I just really enjoy them because they're experiences. It, this has has you know part part of a really good home cinema system in general has elevated the experience to something special for all of the movies that I've watched, even including Better Call Soul season three on Netflix. It's elevated all that content up to something special, something that's you know memorable and it's had me back there and back. If there, you're looking for there. if you're looking for really the best there is from an AV receiver point of view for movies, then this is it. This is it, I don't think you'll get better than this. And the flexibility with Dirac Live means that you can set things up to how you need it perfectly. There's one major caveat with the Dirac Live implementation for this, and it's not the quirks in setup because you can work your way around that. The one big caveat for this is there's only one setup allowed. Now, for people that use projector screens that also use their system for music, and I might be the only one that does this, but I've got a drop down screen. So when the screen's down, that has a slightly different effect on the sound to when the screen's up. So when the screen's down, that is how I took the, the room correction measurements. And, you know, so all, all the equalization stuff is set up for that. Now, when I listen to music, I have the screen up. So therefore, you know, the, the room correction needs to be slightly different for when the screen is up. And you can't do that with this product. And that, to me, is, like a, that is a major flaw and, a, and something that's missing. There needs to be multiple setup options and maybe with a different slightly different equalization curve i would have got better musical performance but i need you know if you can only have one you know you need to have the one with the screen down because that's what you're going to use that i'm going to use this for mostly so how do we rate the avr 850 well easy double thumbs up for me i think it's brilliant in, in terms of its product it's really impressed me and really surprised me and i've really enjoyed my time with it. And I say it's, it's been a mostly movie orientated experience, but it's a, it's a home cinema AV receiver. Really, that is what it needs to deliver in. And you know, I could forgive it, the music side of things, that's not what it is. It's a home cinema AV receiver. I would rather it give me belting home cinema than average home cinema and average music and stuff. You know, the belting home cinema is what we want from it, and that is what it's going to deliver. There's some flaws with it, you know, some things that are not perfect with it and there's some things that are a bit old-fashioned 
and stuff about it but can forgive all those because once you've set it up and once you've got it working then you're just going to get you know glorious movie after movie after movie and it's completely scalable up so that Marson's DTSX so you can take it up to, to that level now that's leading me on to you know the next thing would I buy this with my own money 100% yes I would buy this with my own money and that is actually what I'm looking to do. So I am looking to buy this with my own money because I've been impressed with it so much. Now that's going to allow me with the channel to take the system to Atmos level and there's going to be a whole series of videos coming up shortly and in the future about doing that. And I've never once thought about Atmos at all. The experiences and the demos that I've had of it have only really been uh, sort of experiences but I've spent no time with this AV receiver and after spending some time with it it's like wow what else can it deliver what else can it give me so I'm actually very excited about sort of setting the system up to be Atmos because this product has proved to me that it's good enough to warrant the project so that is all coming up in the channel so just quickly a big thank you to Nintronics who have loaned me this obviously sample for review uh, I don't think they're going to get it back, if I'm honest, but a big thank you to them. Anyway, so if you're in the market for any Arcan products, you want to speak to them. If you're in the market for any home cinema or AV, hi-fi even products, make sure you speak to them because they're a great dealer and they're really going to look after you. So make sure you come back to the channel because the Atmos project's starting soon. And that's going to be really interesting, I think, to people that have either done it or in the process of doing it or considering doing it. So we're going to look at why we do it, what's the benefits of it, what's the negatives of it, and is it worth it? So, I hope you enjoyed this review. Please see in the channel for the setup guide, how to get the best out of this product, and the music demonstrations, because I think you'll be surprised just how good this has sounded for music, actually. And see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.